Hey folks, Quill18 here, and welcome to episode one of our Let's Play Hearts of Iron 3 as Republican Spain. Very excited to finally get this Let's Play started. Now again, as I've said in the intro in episode zero, I'm really not a master of this game. We're going to do the best that we can, but we'll see how it does. Um, and frankly, as Republican Spain, I mean, historically we were on the losing side, and something like nine, ten, nine times out of ten in this, uh, in this game when it's an AI thing, Republican Spain loses anyway, so uh, we're definitely operating a deficit. They, this, Republican Spain is going to start in a miserable, miserable position with a terrible general, i.e. me. So um, I think we're going to just get started. I have, uh, in some test games and in various countries and things, you'll spend a lot of the time early on sort of reorganizing your army structure, but I don't think that's really worthwhile um, in this particular situation because we are going to lose basically half our military as soon as the, uh, the poop hits the fan. Um, there is something to be said about kind of... Um, moving the the units around on the map to try to cluster them up against our our important locations uh for example um we are we are going to control sort of i think southeast spain and maybe some area around here i'm trying to remember exactly i'm not 100 percent sure <clears throat> and that's the thing if you've played this scenario before the next time you play it then you're in a much stronger position because you know exactly what provinces are likely to go it is you know it's not it's not 100%. It's a little fuzzy and weird and whatnot. Um, and of course, we want to uh, we want to try to keep uh, Madrid over here. So yeah, we keep. I'm pretty sure we keep Valencia and uh, this is Barcelona, right? Yeah, over here and Madrid. And I feel like there's another stronghold up top, but I'm not 100% sure. <clears throat> and in practice, we tend to lose a lot of the north and the sort of southwest here. Uh, I'm not sure about the kind of overseas holdings. We'll see how that goes kind of at that point so yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna let the time go and one of the things that uh, I'm quite curious about and again it's one of those where like trial and error in a few different games will kind of tell you is what to start producing now right away we've got a couple of uh, naval units in the queue and I don't think that's going to be a priority to complete in fact what I think is going to be more of a priority is going to be a little bit more ground troops specifically infantry and I'm gonna build some normal infantry I'm gonna create a two brigade squad uh, and I'm going to see if I can't build two of these in, uh, oops, in parallel, actually. Um, and, and what the hell, we'll, we'll start some serial runs. I don't think it's actually going to be much of a thing. And I'm going to take the ships and move them down. I guess I should reorganize it that way. That way they'll be lower down on the priority scale. And I guess one of the things I didn't talk about last time uh, in this, um, let me double check that my volume is set okay, although I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, everything looks fine and peachy. Um, one of the things that I didn't talk about last time is the idea of what the various sliders on the production screen uh, do, because I think I've got kind of distracted by um, by talking about the organization of things. So um, we have a certain amount of industrial capacity, and we just spread it around. We've got a variety of things that we can apply it to. Um, and in particular, production is the big one because this is what actually produces the goods. And if I hit need, well, I actually don't even have enough industrial capacity to meet all that, but that's fine. All I care about is meeting these first two. So what I really would like to do is to have the first two be green. Um, it seems to me like 12 should be enough. I'm surprised it hasn't... Oh, no, 6.8. So it'll be 13.6 will be enough for both of those at maximum speed. Is there not an easier way to do this? I mean, what I could do is just cancel the other two ships or the two ships outright. There we go. That's decent. And I can right click and lock that in. I could cancel these two ships outright and then this button would tell me exactly what I need and I could just click on it and have it finish. But uh, we'll do that. So uh, they're going to be 100% yeah, funded and a tiny bit of overflow to the uh, the Canaries, Can Canarias over here. I don't know. So we'll get those going. They're currently scheduled to finish a little later this year. And actually, I almost don't want to finish them until the Civil War breaks out. Because unless I'm wrong, I should be able to sort of leave them there, wait for the Civil War to break out, and then quickly finish them and deploy them. It's a little cheesy and gamey, but what the hell, we'll take what we can get. Um, reinforcements, we can click here and turn that down. That's going to be fine. Now, it doesn't, uh, unless I set these to automatic control, uh, it won't sort of auto-adjust if some of these needs change, which is a little awkward. And maybe, you know, maybe you don't want to have this on manual control. For now, that's fine, just because barring canceling the ships and losing all the production entirely, um, I want manual production there. Consumer goods uh, really affects a lot of your sort of morale and descent and, and national unity and stuff, I, I think. So we, we want to generally keep that funded, and they're pretty cheap. Lend-lease um, is a way to basically give production to another nation. <clears throat> 
Um, I mean, I think historically this would have been something like um, the United States producing tanks and giving them to Great Britain or, or something to that effect. Uh, and in this game, what they've done is they've um, they've kind of abstracted that somewhat <clears throat> by uh, just making it this land lease system in that if you in the uh, your diplomacy screen you've set this deal up then you can spread some of this out this way but we don't have any of those set up we do have some uh, trade routes that have been founded automatically because we have our diplomacy set to AI there's a certain upgrade requirement um, supplies we'll see about locking that in as well and uh, I guess that'll just have to do and then the upgrades will get a certain amount we might focus a little bit more on upgrades once our resources or once um, once the Civil War breaks out so, I mean, I would like to sort of pull some of these back, especially the good ones. Like, these are, uh, that's standard infantry. I wonder if we've got any, uh, mountain divisions. Those are, uh, am I wrong in thinking that this is a cavalry? Cavalry? Yeah, cavalry. Um, regular infantry. We've even got a little bit of armor here, right? Light armor. I don't know, and I think what you can do is you can technically move these things around in such a way that you get to sort of cheese things and choose your troops. We're going to try to avoid that. We can enact more efficient laws, and which law is it? Specialist training, that is definitely a high priority. We're going to want to get the best possible training we can have. Longer to recruit units, but they're going to start with better experience points, so we're definitely going to want to pick that up. Boom, a little bit of money to do that, but that's okay. National decisions available. We can start preparing for war, uh, which, will inc which will lower our neutrality while that's going on. And sure, that's that's fine. That way, you know, later on, we can get involved with a few more things, you know. Our neighbors, they're coming straight for us. Um, and, you know, it'll be interesting to see if we if we do continue the game, which, I, again, I don't want to make any guarantees for. But it'll be really interesting to see if we can get involved with any skirmishes in France, either, you know, one or the other faction, or pretend, potentially Portugal, or... I don't know. There, there's certainly options, right? We'll have to play it by ear. I don't expect we'll really get involved in a larger conflict, but it's certainly possible. Uh, we do have a bit of a navy. Uh, I think we've got some people sitting here. They're, I don't think they're really going to play a huge part in anything, but they do technically exist. Um, the, your units do upgrade over time, so if you discover in your technology screen, if you upgrade and you unlock better sort of infantry or, or whatever, uh, your units will be upgraded. That's one of the uh, production options, I believe. Yeah, upgrades. See? So... Um, that's good. The exception is the naval stuff doesn't really get upgraded. They're a little bit weird because they've actually, they're made up of components. I don't know if I can, um, pull it up here. But yeah, it is technically possible to vaguely kind of, um, upgrade your ships, but it's not really the same way. So you almost don't want to overinvest in your navy early on. Uh, on the other hand, it also means that, you know, the, the other nations don't get that sort of auto jump forward. So there's something to be said for that. Uh, no commander. Yeah, we're going to rearrange all of our commanders after we get the big split. So for now, I think we're mostly going to go fast forward. We might get a few events here and there, but it's going to be mostly uneventful for a little while. And there's probably some min-maxing and fiddling we could do. We've got quite a bit of uh, diplomacy points kicking around. I'm wondering if we should spend it to make friends with anyone. Now, as the Republic in Spain, we are, again, slightly communist-leaning, okay? Um, our allies include someone like, say, the Soviet Union, for example. And again, nationalist Spain is more fascist-leaning, and they're going to be naturally allied with Germany. <clears throat> so we've got a few different ways that we can swing it. Assuming we win the Civil War, we could ally ourselves with a common term, maybe. We could ally ourselves with the allies, maybe. Again, I'm worried about sort of Germany steamrolling straight through France and coming to us. That might happen. I don't know. Uh, and I think as Republican Spain, we'd actually have a hard time allying ourselves with um, with the Axis. It's, it's not necessarily impossible, but it seems a little hard. Uh, there we go. Some diplom diplomatic influence is automatically being spent. I suspect that's, yeah, to set up more trade routes. So we'll mostly... I don't know if there's a cap on that. It doesn't... I don't see one. It'll be interesting to see if there is. Uh, and if we start to accumulate a lot and we're not really, the AI is not using it to set up trade routes, then maybe we'll use it to see if we can't uh, start sucking up to some of the, um, what do they call it? Like the Axi, Axis Ally Commentary, factions, right? Uh, to see if we can't ally ourselves to a faction. But again, I don't think we want to do that too, too early because there's a risk that we're going to be um, picked up in, or involved in a war that we really don't have much of a chance to do anything with. All right, let's go maximum speed. But even then, at maximum speed, like, we're going one hour at a time, you know, day by day. This The, the pacing of this game is completely different than any other uh, Paradox Grand Strategy game. It is just unbelievable. 
So there was an election. The uh, the Socialist Party has uh, got the most seats, but you know just barely. It's a very fractured country. In fact, it's one of the interesting things about Spain, and this is true even today, um, is that the different regions of Spain. Spain has these um, autonomous regions. It's really weird because the thing with Spain. I don't know, when we say something like a country or a nation or a state, you have a certain idea in your head of what that means. And that's dumb, because it actually doesn't make any sense whatsoever, because virtually every thingy on Earth is sort of a completely different organizational structure and, and uses those terms oddly. For example, there's the nation of the United States of America, where each state is semi-autonomous, but is federated in a union in in a in in this weird sort of like well, what what is what because normally for a lot of people nation and country and state is synonymous right they, they all mean the same thing but then you know the united states sort of breaks it this way and that a state is sort of a, a subgrouping of a larger nation and then you have something like the united kingdom where you have really the country of england the country of wales the country of scotland the country of northern ireland together in one sort of larger state with like varying degrees of independence and autonomy and people vying for different amounts of it, right? Um, like Scotland has a parliament, which it didn't for a long time, Th those sorts of things. And there's always little referendums coming up for independence. And so with Spain, Spain is, uh, is no different. And actually, um, at this time, that, that was some of the, the influences that were happening, right? There were these people who wanted sort of autonomy. You've got Basque and Catalonia, if I'm not right, which is, you know, the sort of this Barcelona region here. Um, and, and so on and so forth. And I'm sorry, I, I'm not really familiar with all the, the, the autonomous regions of Spain, right? So you had these groups that were culturally sort of independent from one another and wanting a certain degree of independence, perhaps even threatening to break up the country altogether. And so that was one of the, uh, the forces encouraging the nationalists side of it. They wanted a unified nation of Spain. So there, there's all this stuff and, you know, you've got all these weird forces. And that's also part of the reasons the Republicans had such a hard time in that they were, by definition, sort of a, a more diverse group, right? Um, whereas the nationalists really had one particular sort of mindset about it. Uh, so, I don't know, interesting time to, uh, to be around. So again, we'll just fast forward and we will get to the point of the actual civil war. Czechoslovakia, cancel our trade agreement, okay. Not the end of the world. Hey, we actually have some free spies, so we may actually have to adjust some of our priorities to get them done. Oh, it, it's in fact even adding up, so. Oh yes, we have reached our maximum active spies, counter espionage, we will, um. We don't have to worry about this quite yet. We'll just be maximum counter espionage for now, because in fact there are some foreign spy activities in our country. Uh, and, um. Yeah, Germany, we'll, we'll send some spies over there. That'll be our other big thing. And in, in practice, stealing, like, some tech... This one doesn't even... Uh, it can steal techs. Apparently, it's quite hard to do. Mostly, what we're going to do is increase their effective threat. Uh, make people scared of Germany. It seems like a sort of a good thing to... Uh, um, to invest in. I'm not sure if we had any other countries listed. No. Because we can you can pull this up and click priority, because when you start the game, you... Depending on what nation you have, you might have some sp spies spread out. For example, we seem to have one in Albania for some reason. Mm. It's there. All right. Um, production. Let's double check on that. We could probably adjust the reinforcements, adjust the supplies needed. This will go up considerably once we actually go into war. That is good. Everything is fine and lovely. All right, keep going. I like how there's like a whole category for nukes. How many nuclear bombs you have. We are not going to be producing any nuclear bombs in Spain. There's just no way we're going to get the tech in time. Alright, but there's the world. I don't, you know, I haven't seen any news announcement. Now, I don't know how many announcements we'll get uh, based on things happening somewhere else. Um, relations. You know, they're very friendly with Italy. They're moderately unfriendly with Belgium and France. I have a feeling that might get a little worse later on. Right, but so far they're okay. And yeah, highest country. The um, highest perceived threat in their region is the UK. So they perceive the UK as their greatest threat, although not much of one yet. <clears throat> so we are now in March of 1936. And the Spanish Civil War will not... It's not a pre-scheduled event about when it will break out. Um, 
it, it breaks out at roughly the appropriate time. When did it actually start? I've got um, some things to check out over here. October? Oh, no, July 17th uh, is when it officially broke out. Uh, Ethiopia is a puppet, all right. Um, but it can break out at slightly different times depending on a few internal factors that, that happen to come into play. I think technically if you happen to lower your um, monthly unity somehow, then, or your, your national unity somehow, then um, it might increase the speed. I think if you clump up some of your units, it can slow it down. And it is possible, I believe, to actually prevent the Spanish Civil War completely, but it requires, you know, the right kind of random events and a little bit of sort of gaming some stuff. Um, and there's not even necessarily an advantage to doing that because you still have to really bump up your national unity to a considerable degree, whereas it'll kind of happen for free once the, uh, the war breaks out. Let's check the production here. And we don't want these to accidentally finish. So June 9th is the wet. This is scheduled for at this time. So it is June now. So I'm actually going to just drop it down to the bottom. A strike. A major strike broke out this weekend in one of the country's largest industrial complexes. Union leaders say that they will continue their fight until the current government gives in to their demands. Hardly anything to worry about. 50-50 chance of losing unity. Um, getting a... Oh, 50% chance of losing the unity, getting a work strike, getting dissent, and all kinds of miserable stuff. It would last halfway through July. Or we can find and arrest strike leaders. Again, a lot of dissent. And a major work strike. So the strike gives the dissent. So the only difference is, if I ignore it, apparently it's not necessarily going to give me a strike, but there's a chance of the two unity. That seems weird, because it almost seems like if I ignore it, the strike should be guaranteed. The funny thing is, I'm actually going to go with this route, because if we can avoid the strike altogether, I guess that's fine. Um... And losing the unity is not going to break us at this time. Yeah, we lost two points of unity. Dropped from 49 to 47%. Ah, France. They have decided. The popular front. We have not forgotten the night of, ninth, night of 6th of February, 1934. We have finally gotten a government of the united left, and we will use this to heal wounds left, and our new labor laws will bring greater peace to the French economy. All right, well, enjoy that for a couple of years. <laughs> I don't think you're going to be worried about your, your peacetime economy soon enough. Alright, so we've got until July 10th when we have to move those things back. I mean, I don't know if that's really the, the way to go, but I'm going to see. We're going to try to min-max this. Now we got a tech upgrade. Hooray, hurrah. Which, again, we need those upgrades, but... More consumer goods required to keep things happy based on the amount of descent. And descent is growing. Okay, more upgrades. Right, we're going to get a few of those in a row. Inefficient research. Oh, because these levels are a little higher, so they actually need a little bit more research points. Um, need zero diplomacy, yeah. I guess that's true. We don't need much. We've got tons tons stored up, so yeah, we can kill that entirely. I should have done that a while ago. Um, espionage, we can probably drop a fair bit down and then lock into place. You know, I'll keep a few passive things around. What the hell? We'll lock in the research, and then the extra goes into officers. And I think I'll keep going up sort of this route. We're going to try to have as good true infantry as possible. But how are we not... I don't know. I don't understand why it says we could be doing more research. Well, I suppose we could if we brought down our officers. Inefficient research. Oh, infantry support weapons is two years ahead. So is small arms. Okay, yeah. So it's inefficient, so we're losing some points here that we really uh, could be storing. So, I mean, I could keep working on it, but what the hell. I'll go ahead and cancel these. And we'll queue up something else. Something else that's not too far ahead. It's interesting because the difficulty on these is actually slightly higher. A zero versus a one, but because these are further ahead, it's just inefficient. So, I mean, we could keep working on it, but, yeah. Um, POI, POI, I don't remember, but something about suppression of, of rebels, partisan activity. POI, POI. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to double check that once we start going. You can see I haven't really worked on this uh, very much. 
So we got militia, we've got this, we've got that. We've got, um, we could work on a few theory things, including, um, better, oh, here we go, industry, that's what I meant. Right, so we can improve our education. It is a little bit of a more difficult thing, um, but gives us lots of points. I don't know if it's necessarily worthwhile. Oh, here we go, let's, let's add on the in industry production and efficiency. That seems like a worthwhile cause. I guess because we're over 100%, maybe that's why it's encouraging us to put in a little bit more research. All right, let's do that then. And just keep going. Okay, I'm, I can't wait for the Civil War to break out, because then we're going to slow time down way far. Okay, more techs. Inefficient research, you know, we'll just, we'll leave it in. It's fine, and then it's a little inefficient. Units available to be deployed. Oh, we finished this. Well, I wonder what happens if we leave it undeployed. I'm just, I'm kind of curious. Fast forward, maximum speed, and time is going pretty well, but I see wasted. Is it really? I wonder if we, there's a chance that we're going to lose some of these undeployed units. That'll be really awkward. Oh, the Olympics. Germans at, saw the most success. And then famously, Jesse Owens as well. It's now August. We're now late for the Civil War. Hmm. Curious. Nothing major breaking out over here yet. And we don't have vision because we don't have much in the way of alliance and factions and all that. Again, we're going to wait to see that sort of thing. Got some French troops on the border. Spanish Civil War! Alright. Excellent. Now, the interesting thing is, this event doesn't actually pause the game, right? If I go and put play again, you can see time, time, time can advance. Um, so technically, if for some reason you want to ignore the war completely, you could just sort of you know, drag this out of the way and not hit the button. But we're going to go ahead and click that, and you can just see exactly all the crap that's going to happen. Okay, and now our country is fractured. It looks like we still have units to deploy, so that is interesting and cheesy. We're going to put this thing at the top. We are now going to make sure... We're going to pump as much as we can into upgrades, so that the existing troops that we have start to be upgraded. Um, and we're going to take a look at what how things are, and then what we're probably going to do is end up cutting this video. And the next video will start with the actual war. All right, so uh, the colors might be a little hard to see, but we are the uh, the sort of brighter yellow, more, I don't know, I'm going to call it uh, wheat yellow. And then we've got the sort of brownish kind of clay color over here is the uh, nationalist Spain. So we have a very large block going on right now, which is great, but we uh, there are little pockets of enemy troops all over the place, right? And these are going to claim the land right away. Uh, claiming territory in Hearts of Iron 3 happens instantly. There's no need to do any sort of sieging or anything of the sort. Now, are these really going to attack instantly? How many troops do I actually have sitting around here? Not, not a lot. That is very disturbing. Um, hmm. Interesting. There's also two ways to move units around. Can I, can I deploy this infantry brigade right here? Oh, nice. Okay. That is very good. More efficient laws can be enacted. Excellent. Because it's war now, so a lot of things break out. Uh, in fact, we'll go through every category. And, okay, we can't change the civil laws yet. Volunteer army, we're going to go all the way to three-year draft. Frankly, I wouldn't mind full conscription. Why can't we pick it? Ah, uh, I see ratio against enemies less than 200%. Yeah, if you're like really just kind of screwed. But yeah, we'll go for the three-year draft so we'll get more manpower. That is good. We want the war economy. And we don't have total war mobilization, but that's okay. Um, we're going to go for large education investment. It's going to cost money, but we're going to get more leadership out of it. 
We want... Oh, again, we can't go here. Government's an IC still. Okay, we'll go to a mixed industry anyway. And we'll drop to a censored press. Just so that we get less uh, national unity penalties and so on and so forth. We're already at 100%, which is great. Um, and then we've got the specialist training already, which is already the best there. Okay, we are already mobilized, although it may take a while for some of our... Um, some of our troops to really come up to maximum force. We've got the production going on, inefficient research, um, which is fine. I want the points going to uh, officer ship anyway, so that's okay. Wait. Oh, I can do here? All right, massive it is. Maybe it had other re requirements? I don't know. Okay, so... Hmm. Upgrades are good, but actually, you know what? Hey, hold on, hold the phone. I uh, I want to make sure to, that that first unit actually gets completed. So let's put enough in there to meet its IC requirement, because that that will allow us to deploy things really, really, really quickly. Um, in terms of structure, now one of the things that's really important in this game is the question of supply, right? Which is highly realistic, entirely reasonable. So, um, there are, there are supply routes to be concerned with, right? Which is kind of what these colors are. And also whether a certain province is getting supplied, uh, altogether. And if your units ever get stuck somewhere outside of supply, then they will become far less efficient at fighting because they don't have enough food, water, fuel, munitions, all that kind of thing. Uh, in fact, one of the very most common ways to destroy an enemy, even a, more, a superior enemy force, is if you can somehow surround them and cut them off from supply, and then you just crush them in their severely weakened state. Very powerful. And in some of my test games, I had some of my units caught uh, far behind enemy lines, again, in the sort of Spanish... Um, uh, example here because this can sort of happen and uh, they'll just kind of run out of gas and not be able to move which is kind of freaky and weird so um, we're probably we really need some armies and army corps truly so maybe I should uh, upgrade some of these we need to set up the leaders as well I'm not sure about reach I think what we're gonna have is probably or I said army corps armies and army groups um, again, yeah, I don't know the range, but I'm wondering, I might upgrade one of these guys to make him an army group, and then I'll have a couple of armies, one in the east and, and one kind of over here. God, there's a lot of isolation going on. Did I hit the wrong button? What did I want to do? Oh, there we go. Core, army, create an army group. All right, so now and I can pull open the side menu and really start to see the structure. So, yeah, th this this might take a little bit uh, to kind of reorganize. There's there's a certain amount of stuff you can do here. Uh, you can even do some dragging and dropping. Um, and you can see the structure now. So what I really want is... Oh, the army group is not part of my theater HQ. So that's, that's number one. We want that. Boom. And then we want everyone there. We don't want anyone to be directly under the Madrid HQ, for example. We want them to be part of something else. So I think the easiest thing to do... Actually, now that I think about it, is go through each one of these and anyone who's attached to stuff I'm gonna just detach them from the organization structure entirely well this one's actually fine uh, and the ships and stuff don't really matter the same way um, but yeah I'm just gonna go through and detach everyone and then reattach them and try to create something that makes some amount of sense uh, and that includes these guys technically the rankings are okay but I'm not sure about range and I might want to do something slightly different here and there Oh, what the hell, let's, let's get these guys out too. Just for the sake of completeness. Yeah, I suspect this part will be kind of dull. But I'm going to keep this in the video anyway. It, you, there's not going to be any action, so you feel absolutely free 
to, uh, to skip this if it doesn't seem particularly interesting. I'm not even going to guarantee that I'm going to end up like making kind of a, a smart structure here. I'm just going to be a structure. There's probably a faster way to do this too. But I don't have it. So, so first I'm going to take everyone out, then I'm going to put them all back in. Okay, these are all... Yeah, the ships I actually didn't need to take out. Okay, so that's, that's fine. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the bottom and then assign them to appropriate groups, assuming there's one within range. So this one's only got a core, right? The three star. Um, although, no, I guess that's what it has to be because it can't, it can't be part of a division. Um... And this is what? That's cavalry. Yeah, so that's fine. So it can belong to the core that's here. Um, and speaking of this core, does it have an army within range? It does, so that's very happy making. And the army, it has an army group within range. Yeah, it's like right on top of it. And the army group... So we could have left that there, but again, for completeness, I was going to go through the thing. This has a core... Is that going to be within range? No, it's not. So detach it. I'm going to create a new core here. So this is going to be the second core, and we're going to attach it to an army, and it's going to be in range there. So that's great. You have a core in range. And this core is in range of an army. You have... I think this core is going to be out of range. It is. Okay. There's just a random core kicking around. Colonial Guards, I'm not going to worry too much about their structure. Um, they're As long as they're within range of something, and probably that's going to be... I don't even think it's going to be an army group, no. They probably aren't even in range of the, um, the theater HQ. So you know what, we'll leave them disconnected. There's not really any reason to go one way or another. This is actually mountain guys. That core. Oh, they are in range of that core. Very interesting. Okay. And this is actually a core on its own, so we'll have a join there. Really? So it's too far away from that army. Yeah, so we're going to need another army over here, which is fine. We can create it on the spot. That's great. And attach this to the army group in Madrid, and that's going to be fine. Um, connect. Good. Connect. That should be within range, yes. Connect. And then we get to assign leaders to everyone. Or more accurately almost, we end up we're gonna take away all the leaders from everyone. And it's not gonna be in range of that. But the army group? Yes. Take away leaders from everyone and then reapply them somewhere else. Uh, this one we're gonna leave disconnected. This one we almost need um Yeah, there we go. Okay, we do have a core over here. And there was even some enemy forces over here that we're going to have to try to take out at some point. That's interesting. Okay, good. Hmm. Let's 
gonna be out of range of this core. And we're really gonna need a core somewhere over here, so I'm gonna create one here. And that'll be useful for a variety of these little guys over here. Good. And while I'm here, let me connect you to that. And oh, there's a core over here. You know what? I'm going to detach you and reattach you to that one. Yeah, I like that structure better. So I'm going to Sahara, Naval Base, Colonial Guard. Okay, so everyone is in a large structure. And really what I could do is take all the fleets out of my... my theater HQ and do something else, but I uh, won't be too concerned. Um, there is... With the leadership screen, I'm pretty sure there's a way to just take everyone off of everything. Unassign all, that's what I want. And we will do that. Boom. So none of my anything has a leader at this point, okay? So, we've talked about before how the... Um, the, each one of these organizations gives its bonus to everything else down the line and with smaller and smaller numbers. For example, on the division level, a huge, in fact, the full bonus, I think, of the, um, the leader's trait or traits get applied, right? And that goes smaller and smaller down the line. Um, but some of the levels above actually have very interesting bonuses that are, are going to be much more important. And there's some min-max in there. Now, I'm not really going to break my head over that. And I am going to try to sort of assign the most intelligent people where I can. Um, now, there's a rank, uh, a rank requirement. You need a high enough rank to be able to assign someone to a various role. Uh, the problem is, like for example, my Madrid HQ needs someone extremely high ranked, but you can always promote and demote people whenever you want. Um, I think there's certain implications in terms of XP and whatever. This guy's technically my most skilled, I think. Uh, logistics wizard. Defensive Doctrine, you know, maybe it doesn't make sense for him to be at the top, or maybe it is. But what the hell, we'll, we'll throw him up there. There we go, so now he's a four-star general? I don't know, just his rank, I'm not sure if it, if it really coordinates to something, maybe it does. So we'll assign him in our Madrid headquarters, and then in our army group. Again, we're just going to continue that. And mostly pick the higher skilled people whenever we can. Um, and just rank them up as needed. And we need four stars for the army group. Oh, this core. Does it not have an army within range? Okay, it does now. Maybe it didn't for a while. Can I assign leaders directly? No. Now, I think some of these traits only apply at the lower levels. So maybe we want to save this guy for a division. I think there's something like that. Again, I might just be lying to you guys. Clearly, I don't have a tremendous amount of knowledge in general. But you're just going to have to suck it up and deal. Oh, again, this is a core. Oh, that's the Africa core. Um, can it? No, it's not close enough to an army. I could make an army over here. It's fine. We'll just put a part of a group. That's totally okay. Then give him the leadership. This guy. And then again, from within that, we can assign more. But at a certain point, I think we want to just be able to... Um, is there not a re-auto-assign everyone? There's the auto-assign button. So now I think if I don't do anything, it'll reassign the rest given a few moments. So I'm not going to drill down any further. That, I'm going to call that good enough for now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a split in this video, and we'll be back next time with perhaps a little actual fighting. See you, folks.